Chase, City, American Express, Capital One, Discover, and endless others, there are hundreds of cards on the market. And so the number one question I'm asked is which one should I get? Now there are a hundred different ways to answer that question based on a hundred different factors, but 99% of the time my answer is Chase. And I'm gonna tell you why. Hey, what's up YouTube? My name is Ed and welcome to my channel. Here we talk about personal finance, travel hacking, and credit cards. And if you like what you see, go ahead, hit the like button and consider subscribing while you're at it. I appreciate you so much. Today we're talking about JP Morgan Chase, otherwise known as Chase Bank. And they have been a pioneer in the industry for a very long time. In 2016, they released the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card. And at the time, really, I believe, broke the industry in a lot of ways. This card was released with a 100,000 point sign up bonus, a $300 annual credit towards travel, and 3x earning on dining and travel. And honestly, I think many people would say that this card paved the way for the credit card landscape as we know it today. But is Chase still at the top of the industry? Is Chase still pioneering? Well, I'm not sure if they're so much as pioneering as really having the rest of the industry in handcuffs, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. But today we see the Sapphire lineup, the Freedom lineup, the Ink lineup, a series of phenomenal cards, all giving you the ability to earn Chase Ultimate Reward Points, one of, if not the best flexible currency in the credit card landscape today. And so when people ask me what is the next card I should get or what is the first card I should get, truly 99% of the time my answer is Chase. Now, if you have low credit or no credit, it's very possible I might be pointing you towards uh, like a Discover It card, maybe something like the Discover It secured card, especially if you have no or bad credit. Uh, if you're a student, it's very possible I might be recommending something like the Capital One Saver One Student Reward Credit Card. I think I got that name right. Uh, a very long name, but honestly, an awesome card. So if you're a student, I might be pushing you in that direction. But otherwise, yeah, 99% of the time, I'm recommending Chase. And so today, I want to tell you the five reasons that I believe Chase is still my preferred issuer for your early stage credit card journey. Number one, opportunity cost. Like it or not, this is Chase's world and we're all living in it. I said a few seconds ago that we're kinda handcuffed by Chase and that's true because we live in a world of the Chase 524 rule. If you're not sure what the Chase 524 rule is, it's all over YouTube. You can Google it and find endless articles about it. But here's a definition that I found from the points guy. It said, in order to be approved for any Chase card, you cannot have opened five or more personal credit cards across all banks in the last 24 months. So I don't know if you caught that. This is five cards in your last 24 months, but five cards from any issuer, any bank, which means once you fill up those five slots, you have to wait 24 months for the first card to cycle off of your 524 status before you might be eligible to apply for a new Chase card to enter that slot. Well, what's that mean? Well, it makes sense that there's opportunity costs associated with getting Chase cards because if I fill up those five slots with cards from other issuers, I'm then gonna have to wait for those cards to leave my 524 status before I'm eligible to get a Chase card. And so what that means is it makes logical sense that our earliest cards, maybe even our first five cards, again, unless maybe you need a starter card or a student card, but that our earliest cards would be Chase cards. Let's fill up our 524 status with Chase first because then we can go to other issuers not really limited by such a uh, restrictive rule. Now there are other rules from other issuers, but I could argue that 524 is maybe the most restrictive uh, and it causes you to focus on Chase early on in your credit card journey. Now I'm not totally convinced that's a bad thing though. Because while you're focusing on Chase, it keeps your focus, yeah, on one issuer. 
I think some people fall into this trap of getting cards from multiple issuers too early and they might have difficulty managing multiple cards or juggling multiple cards from different issuers. So by sticking with Chase, you know that you're going to have one app to manage. They're all going to be in that same app and it's going to be super easy for you to see the different accounts, see the different account balances and make sure that you're not losing track of any of these cards. I also believe that while you're evaluating this network of cards where there's hundreds of cards on the market, by just focusing on Chase, you can just look at their card offerings and it I think really helps make it easy for you to identify what is the next best card available for me. And so with all of that to consider, by Chase really handcuffing us to force to use them, I actually think that it's a pretty good idea for most people. Chase is an easy bank to uh, have a relationship with. They have a nice app. I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a second. And do I wish the 524 rule didn't exist? Probably, but it does exist. So we have to play within the rules of the game. So Chase is really tying our hands here, but honestly, this makes your life a little bit easier because you know you're going to live in Chase's world for at least the, maybe the first 12 to 18 months and you know that your cards are gonna come here. So it gives you less to worry about, less to focus on, and it really lets you simplify your credit card journey. The second reason I like Chase early on in the credit card game is because of Chase Ultimate Rewards Points. Now Chase Ultimate Rewards Points, or UR Points, this is their flexible currency associated with their primary cards. You can earn Chase Ultimate Reward Points from Sapphire cards, Freedom cards, and ink cards. And honestly, you could make the case that this is the best flexible currency on the market. You got city thank you points, you got uh, American Express, uh, membership reward points. But when it look at Chase points, I just feel like Chase makes it so easy and accessible to use their points. I think they also have a variety of transfer partners that are, are really accessible to people in the credit card journey. They also have one partner that you can only find uh, with them at, in using their flexible currency, and that is Hyatt. And if you are a subscriber to the channel, you know how much I love Hyatt and believe that, honestly, they probably have the best bang for your buck value within the hotel redemption world right now using their point setup. And so you can use your Chase Ultimate Reward Points to transfer out to these various partners. Now again, other issuers have their own variations of a flexible currency, but I love Chase Ultimate Reward Points because there's so many cards within their ecosystem that can fuel and inject more points into your wallet, right? And so you can have a setup with a Chase Sapphire Preferred and then maybe add a Chase Freedom Unlimited and a Chase Freedom Flex. And if you got a business, add a Chase Inc. Cash, right? And all of these points are going, going to go to your same wallet and allow you to accumulate those cards. When you look at American Express, if you want to earn uh, membership reward points, yeah, they have a few no annual fee cards, but their biggest point earners are all their charge cards, right? They got the green and the gold and the platinum. To have multiple of those, you're really looking at a setup that's going to have a much higher annual fee cost. So uh, Chase really low, allows a low barrier to entry to really get in, get multiple of their cards, many of them having no annual fees, and you can be in right away earning a lot of points and transferring those to accessible partners and I believe taking advantage of some phenomenal redemptions right away. The third reason I love Chase is because of accessible downgrade options. So if you want to go after the Chase Sapphire Reserve, maybe just for the welcome bonus, uh, or if you want to get the Chase Sapphire Preferred, maybe again just for the welcome bonus, but the cards themselves don't really provide you consistent value, you can downgrade Sapphire cards to a Freedom card. Now, make sure that you already own the Freedom card outright because that means you're gonna get the bonus uh, by having, let's say, the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Apply for it outright, get the bonus over here as well. But then if you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred, you can actually downgrade that to maybe another uh, Chase Freedom Unlimited card. You end up with two of these cards, but that's okay. They're both no annual fee cards and you can live with them because, uh, because they're not costing you anything to keep. But if you downgrade your Chase Sapphire card first, 
you will then be ineligible to apply outright for uh, one of those freedom cards. So uh, all of that to say is if I end up with a card, maybe even in the ink lineup that has an annual fee, I can downgrade that to a no annual fee uh, Chase Inc. business card. Why is this important? Because early on in your credit card journey, you don't wanna be canceling a lot of cards. Canceling a card will ding your credit. Now, if you are in mid game or late game, I'm not totally afraid of canceling a card every once in a while, especially if it's not gonna give you year to year uh, um, actual value. Uh, but early on, you don't wanna be canceling cards. So you want to apply for cards, especially if they have no annual fees, keep them open, right? Maybe you use them to get the bonus and then you're throwing them in your safe, you're throwing them in your sock drawer and just kind of letting them exist over there. Maybe pulling them out once a year to keep them active, but you're just kind of letting them sit over there. It allows you to uh, lengthen your credit history, allows you to have uh, low credit utilization. All these things are gonna help you build credit. We're just gonna hold on to them. But if I have a card like the Sapphire Reserve and I'm no longer getting value from this card, I can easily downgrade it to a Freedom card or the no annual fee Sapphire card, which is kind of a secret card. It's not listed on their website, but you still can downgrade to it. And you can downgrade these cards, allowing you to keep that credit line open, keep a positive impact on your credit history, but now this card is not costing you anything. I think another reason I love this is because if I have the Chase Sapphire Preferred, Chase has a uh, one Sapphire roll, so you can only have one Sapphire card at a time, but they also have a 48 month rule. So if I get the Chase Sapphire Preferred now and I downgrade it maybe to a Chase Freedom Unlimited, in four years I'll be eligible to apply for a Chase Sapphire Preferred again, allowing me to get more points, more bonuses. So uh, I believe Chase just offers you a little bit more flexibility there with your ability to uh, move those cards down to no annual fees and then maybe reapply later for cards later, getting you more points. Unlike something like American Express, which might have a once in a lifetime rule with a card, Chase, we don't really see that. And so, yeah, so a lot of flexibility with downgrading, get you to a no annual fee card, let you keep those credit lines open, let you keep going strong in your credit card journey. The fourth reason I love Chase credit cards is because some of their co-branded cards, I love their hotel co-branded cards, particularly uh, Marriott, Hyatt, and IHG. They have roughly 95 to $99 annual fee variations of those co-branded cards for all three of those hotel chains. And I love these cards. I would consider them a keeper card. What's that mean? It means I'm gonna get that card. I'm basically keeping it forever. I will not close that account. I will not down, try to downgrade it. You really can't, but um, I will not get rid of this account even though it has an annual fee. Why? because those cards come with a free night annual certificate. So between my wife and I, we each have an IHG card, we each have a Hyatt card, we each have a Marriott card. Those cards collectively are costing us somewhere around $600 annually in annual fees. But we also get six free night certificates every single year. And we use those for uh, maybe random one night trips or maybe like a two night getaway, uh, this upcoming week, we're actually getting, taking a cruise out of Miami. And so we're using our IHG free night certificate, which came from a card that cost us $95 a year to stay at the Intercontinental Miami. This is a hotel that would normally run you $300 a night. I cannot wait to stay here. I'm so excited but I'm getting roughly $200 of value from just owning this card. And it would have been impossible for me to find a hotel in Miami for less than $95. So by owning this card, I'm getting positive value from it. And honestly, I believe just with this free night certificate on all of these cards, I'm gonna get positive value really forever. So for me, these are keeper cards. But there's also great co-branded variations of airlines as well. Uh, particularly, I love Southwest. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're flying to Florida, Florida a lot uh, to see my in-laws. And so there's uh, nonstop flights from Pittsburgh to Tampa, Pittsburgh to Orlando, Pittsburgh to Fort Lauderdale, all these options. 
and we can quickly jump on a Southwest flight with our kids, which I think Southwest is very accessible for families and it's just super easy. And so even having the Southwest cards allows me to get a lot of points with Southwest. I love the Southwest business card, which gets me 365 Wi-Fi credits a year, uh, a handful of upgraded boardings a year. Um, it's just a, a phenomenal card to have. It gives me anniversary points, and I will consider my Southwest cards as well to be keeper cards. They, despite their annual fees, they give me enough value to justify me keeping them every single year. Um, I also have the uh, United card, the lowest level of the United card, the no annual fee version, uh, really because I don't fly United a lot, so I couldn't justify getting one of the higher annual fee cards. So uh, for now, I just have their lowest tier one. But again, maybe you are a United fan and Chase has you covered there. They also have a variety of other uh, airlines, you know, British Airways, Iberia, you can check all of those out on their website, but just a wide variety of co-branded cards that I think are going to fit your lifestyle really, no matter where you're at. Um, and that's not to mention other cards like the Amazon prime card, which I think is really awesome. If you already have Amazon prime 5% back on all your Amazon purchases. So, um, there's cards like that. Uh, that I think are just super value in Chase's lineup. Um, really except the Disney card. The Disney cards are terrible. Don't get the Disney cards. And the last reason I love Chase cards is honestly uh, their Chase app and their customer experience. Now, if you go on Reddit, you're gonna find a lot of different data points around Chase's customer service. There's a lot of people that have poor experiences with their customer service, um, but honestly, I feel like the, the phone call customer service experience really anywhere is just, not great. And so there might be a few exceptions to that. American Express, uh, in my experience, is really great phone customer support. Um, but I, honest, I'm not really grading Chase on their phone customer support. So forgive me if this is a hot take, but I have done all of my customer support through the Chase app. Their messaging system, I believe, is elite. They basically respond to you within 24 hours and I can use their messaging service to solve any problem that I might have. I do believe their app in general has a really great user interface. I love that when I apply for a personal card, I can immediately through the app add that to my Apple wallet, which is unique to personal cards. You can't do that with business cards. But the ability to just message the customer service and you can move credit limits around from card to card. I can request to downgrade my card through that messaging service. I can request to expedite shipping, which is a free service that they apply on all their cards, but you do have to ask for it. I can do it very easily through the messaging service on the app. Uh, and so all of these things, I just think it makes this as an issuer, especially when you're new to the credit card game, just so accessible for people. And if you're intimidated by managing a bunch of cards or intimidating by having more than one credit card, having all Chase cards and living within their app and knowing you have the messaging service available, I just feel like it makes it easy to have a Chase card. Um, so I don't know what your experience like has been with customer service, but honestly, mine has been uh, pretty rock solid. I, I've had, uh, I don't think any poor experiences with Chase's customer service, but between their app and the customer service, I think this really rounds out uh, my love for Chase as an early issuer in the credit card game. Now, with all that said, are there things I don't like about Chase? Yes. Uh, are there cons? Yes. Uh, I think one of the biggest cons for me is that across all their cards, they don't really have a card that gives you a bonus for groceries, which is really frustrating. They had some specials come out here and there, but there's not a consistent uh, bonus for a grocery category and I think that's really unfortunate. Uh, my first point of the things I love was the Chase 524 rule but I can't say that I love that rule. I mean it probably would be better and less restrictive for all of us if it didn't exist. So it's kind of, a, I talked about it earlier, kind of uh, the way it forces your hand turns it into a pro but I guess in all reality it's probably a con. Uh, but despite these things, do I believe that Chase is still the best place to start your credit card journey in 2023? Yeah, uh, 
um, because it's not like any of us can get approved for an American Express welcome bonus right now. Uh, if you haven't seen my latest video on American Express pop-up jail, please go ahead and watch that to get that reference. But I have to know, do you agree or disagree? Do you think Chase is worth it as an early issuer for early stage credit card game? What are you recommending to people as their first card? I'd love to know. Drop it in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.